Is the 4080 really a 4K card? I mean, it should be, right? It's the second most powerful NVIDIA GPU out there. It is a card that costs $1,200 MSRP. In fact, when I bought my 4080, everybody lost their minds in my comment section. So many people telling me, you know, you shouldn't have bought that. You're what's wrong with the gaming community. You should have bought a 4090 and the list goes on and on. More about the 4090 part later. But with that being said though, I bought a 4080 and it was a nice performance uplift over my 3080. And I had plenty of other reasons for buying the 4080 and I made a whole video about that experience but the question remains is a 4080 really a 4k capable card or is the 4090 truly the only 4k capable card out there well today we're focusing mostly on the 4080 if you want to know more about the 4090 segment stay tuned for my next video but today we're mostly going to focus on the 4080 now I got a lot to talk to you about but before we get into it a quick word from today's video sponsor gamers you are sitting entirely too much you need to stand a little bit more and there's no better way of doing that than by investing into a standing desk and FlexiSpot has the right desk for you. They sent me out their E7 Premium Standing Desk, and I absolutely love this thing. The desk comes with a touchpad that has an LCD display on it, so you can pre-program your preferred sitting and standing height. You can adjust it to your specific height. In addition to that, the build quality is phenomenal. Even at my preferred standing height, there is virtually little to no wobble while I'm using it. I even tested this with not one, but two different glasses of water at the same time, and there was very little wobble. There are two motors on this this desk so that means you can raise and lower the desk faster and quieter and you can use larger tabletops speaking of tabletops I have the 60 inch version and this allows me to accommodate my PC on the desk with a 48 inch LG OLED TV and a secondary monitor with room to spare the desk comes with some cable management trays which allows me to get this ultra clean look for cable management and overall I could not be happier with the standing desk and you know I'm gonna look out for you I have a promo code that will give you 10% off any orders over $500. So be sure to use my code at checkout. And if this desk isn't for you, they have other different kinds of models as well. So definitely be sure to check out their website. You might find something you like. I highly recommend purchasing a standing desk. And if you're going to purchase one, I can definitely vouch for FlexiSpot. So check them out. All right. So the 4080 released to the world back in November of 2022 for $1,200 MSRP. My 4080 is the Gigabyte Aero OC, and this card is absolutely phenomenal. It has a dual BIOS switch on it. And even in the OC mode, which is the default position, the card runs fairly quiet and the card definitely runs cold. I mean, I typically averaged around 62 to 63 C, even at native 4K gaming. During the summer, sometimes I would see around 64 C. The worst ever was about 64. Five. The card runs cold, the card runs quiet, it's big, it's beautiful, and it went great with my all white PC aesthetic. Honestly, I was very happy with my purchase, but that is not the point of today's video. The point is, can the card do 4K gaming, really? Now, the main reason why I'm making this video is simply because I've seen the narrative online that the 4090 is the only true 4K capable card on the market. At $1,200 in 2023, the 4080 better be a 4K capable card. And so if it's not, then we got a problem. But you see this entire time I've been reading these comments about the 4090 being the only true 4K capable card. Meanwhile, while reading the comments, I'm using a 4080 on a 4K LG OLED TV with a 120 Hertz refresh rate as my primary monitor. And when I game, that is the monitor I choose to game on. And my 4K gaming experience has been fine. But then it has occurred to me, what are your standards for 4K gaming? You see, for me, I'm fine personally with 4K 100-ish FPS. I really am. After about 90, 95 FPS, I get into the territory of diminishing returns on frame rate for me personally. We're all a little bit different here, but for me, that's, that's about my marker. And then most people are just looking for a rock solid 60 frames per second. If they can get that, they're totally happy. So it really comes down to what are your standards? Now on the screen right now, I will have my full detailed PC specifications. This is the exact hardware you are seeing used for all of these benchmarks. All of these benchmarks, all of this gameplay was captured with using the OBS recording software. And so some of the frame rates are slightly lower than what they would normally be otherwise. And so whatever frame rate you see on screen, add maybe three or four more frames to that, if that, for gaming without recording in OBS. It's a little bit of an impact, not a big one, but it is something I do wanna notate for you. Now, without any further ado, 
Let's get into the benchmarks. Kicking things off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla native 4K max settings, no upscaling of any kind. As the benchmark progresses, the frame rate does increase. I think by the end of this benchmark, we round out around 94 FPS on average. And to be honest, the Assassin's Creed franchise is typically pretty demanding to run anyway. So, and to average in the 90s with native 4K with no upscaling support, that's actually really good. But on the other hand, you may think, well, hey, why is it not more for such an expensive GPU. And at the same time, with a single player story driven game, I don't see the frame rate here being a problem. And if you look at the power usage here, we're not even breaking 280 watts hardly at all. And the overall temperature is not even hitting 60 C. Again, this card runs cool, it runs quiet, and it is powerful. Next up, we have God of War 2018 native 4K Ultra Plus preset. And of course, no upscaling of any kind. And as you can see, our frame rate is right there around 100 FPS with everything maxed out. Our power usage is actually significantly higher when compared to Assassin's Creed Valhalla and our temperatures have increased because of that. Instead of being below 60C, we're now hovering around 63 to 64C. By no means at all are these numbers considered bad and I have thoroughly enjoyed playing God of War 2018 on my PC. However, I will admit with the game being so old at this point, I was expecting a little bit more here on the frame rate, but again, these numbers are not bad and you are talking about a single player story driven game native 4k everything maxed out right at 100 fps on average that is not bad at all next up i had to throw in halo infinite for a variety of reasons one i am a big halo fan and number two when halo infinite first came out i was still using my rtx 3080 and one of the things i was really expecting was to be able to take halo infinite on native 4k ultra settings and max it out because after all it's a halo title it's an esports title and it shouldn't really be that demanding however with my 3080 i was was really only able to get about 75 to 80 FPS on average if I was lucky with everything maxed out at native 4K. And I became obsessed with trying to max out my monitor's refresh rate, which is 120 FPS. After looking at all the other cards, the 3080 Ti, the 3090, 90 Ti, even AMD's limited edition Halo Infinite 6950 XT, none of these cards could run Halo Infinite at native 4K on the Ultra preset. But when I got my 4080, I was definitely able to do that. And as you can see, the 4080 here, is drawing just a little bit over 300 watts. The temperature hovers around 61 to 62 C. And our average frame rate here is actually above my monitor's refresh rate of 120 FPS. And so that is phenomenal. And in many cases, we're actually approaching 130 FPS, depending on what's going on on the map and what area we may be in. But overall, Halo Infinite is definitely a game that you can absolutely run at native 4K with max settings and still have incredibly high frame rates with the 4080. Next up, we have Ratchet & Clank, native 4K, very high preset. Set. Texture filtering is set to 16 times. Ray trace reflections are set to on and they are set to high. And as you can see, we're averaging about 67 FPS and we are dipping below that, unfortunately. Ray tracing, even in 2023, even on the RTX 4080, is still incredibly demanding. And this isn't even all of the ray tracing options available. This is only reflections and it's not even maxing out the reflections. And as you can see, we're only hovering between 60 and 70. 70 FPS. This is definitely playable. The game looks phenomenal. You can absolutely enjoy this. And if you absolutely hate upscaling, I think this does show the capabilities of the 4080 quite well. You can look at the temperatures up there and see that we're barely even breaking 60 C, which is absolutely phenomenal. We're not even hitting 300 Watts on the power usage. So all of these things are great. But again, when you go back to that price tag and you realize, wow, a brand new game 2023 on a car that's not officially a year old that costs $1,200. I would expect a little bit more than this, but at the end of the day, what are your expectations for 4K gaming? If it's 4K 60, then these settings definitely accommodate you. But now we're going to keep all the settings the same, and instead we will simply enable DLSS quality mode and turn on frame generation. And so this means it is rendering natively at 1440p and upscaling the image to target 4K resolution. And as you can see, the temperature has not really changed, the power usage has not really changed, but that frame rate has absolutely increased. We went from struggling to even hit 70 FPS on average to now averaging 125 FPS. And no, again, this is not all the settings in terms of ray tracing available, but the fact is this game with these settings right here looks absolutely incredible. And now you're able to get over 100 FPS on average by simply using DLSS and frame generation. And frame generation is a feature that you can only find on the 40 series cards. And now the last game we're gonna take a look at is Spider 
Spider-Man Remastered. Native 4K, very high settings, 16X on texture filtering, ray tracing reflections are set to very high, and geometry detail is also set to high. And this is all native, keep that in mind. And as you can see, our average frame rate is 86 FPS. Our temperatures are barely hitting 60C. Most of the time we're at 58, 59C. Our power usage is only a little bit over 250 watts. Spider-Man Remastered is one of those games that is demanding while being incredibly optimized. It looks incredible. It is a lot of fun. And the 4080 can definitely give you a great experience with native settings while using ray tracing. That is one of the more impressive showings for the 4080 in my opinion. And now finally, I decided to have a little bit of fun with all of the testing. And so I maxed out everything. And I mean everything. I cranked up the ray tracing to its maximum detail. I maxed out every setting I could. And with DLSS quality plus frame generation, rendering at native 1440p, upscaling to target 4K resolution, we're averaging about 120 frames per second. And again, frame generation is one of those things you can only find on the 40 series cards. And it's not perfect, but as a whole, all of these technologies work incredibly well together. And it definitely gives you an excellent gaming experience. You know, this is like the 15th time I've tried recording this conclusion and each time I get tripped up and I can't really figure out how I wanna wrap up this video. So let me try and make this whole thing as simple as possible. The idea of this video, in my opinion, is silly because I think it should be obvious that in 2023, the 4080 is certainly a 4K capable card. With that being said, again, it comes down to your standards and your expectations. What do you want? What do you mean? What do you expect when you say, I want a 4K capable card? With all of that being said, however, the 4080 is expensive. It's a terrible value. And whether if you have a 4080, a 4070, a 4090, it doesn't matter. All GPUs over time will eventually get knocked down a peg or two. They just will. There will come a day when the 4080 won't be a 4K card and it will be a 1440 p high refresh rate card in fact you can already buy it for 1440p and i promise you you will be blown away by the performance at 1440p it rivals a 4090 at 1440p it really does it doesn't beat it but it gets really close to matching it and so with that being said the 4080 is a great gpu in terms of just capabilities and features, but it is expensive. It's a terrible value. Now, speaking of price and all of that, recently the 4080 has fallen in price a little bit. Newegg has had the MSI Ventus for $999. I did a full review on that GPU. I'll have a card pop up now if you want to check it out. But in addition to that, if you go over to eBay, you can look at items sold and you can see that the 4080s have been selling on a regular basis for about $900. Now, $900 is definitely a lot of money to spend on a graphics card but that is $300 below the MSRP. And so that is a lot of money saved. That is a massive step in the right direction. And if you want a 4080, I would definitely recommend checking that out before buying new, I really would. Now, with all that being said, it really comes down to you to make the decision. I'm not here to tell you to go buy or not to buy a GPU. I really don't think anybody should look for a content creator to tell them what to do with their money. I give you the information, you make the decision. It's that simple. So let me know in the comment section below what you're thinking about a 4080 in 2023, almost a year after its original release. Now, with all that being said, I do have a 4090 video just like this coming up next. So get subscribed if you wanna see that type of content. A massive shout out to all of my Patreon members. Thank you guys for the continued support. You are totally awesome. I really appreciate you. And if you wanna join the Patreon team and get exclusive behind the scenes access, click the link in the pinned comment below. And that's all I got for this video. And until next time, E-Rock out.